Now let's talk about applying the factors. The, the whole goal of the study has been to find out what factors affect error penetration, how they affect it, and how much they affect it. And so all these factors are just a goodie box of tools. And you should look at them that way. Nobody's telling you you got to use all of them, or if you're not using all of them, you're doing something terrible. They're all things that you can use to incorporate into your error design that will improve error performance. And you can pick and choose. Every single factor you add is going to improve the terminal performance. Any factor you leave out, at least under some conditions, is going to diminish that terminal performance. So it's a balancing act of what you're looking to do. You can just choose the components with an eye towards better structural integrity. That's going to improve the terminal performance of your error. You can choose a broadhead with a high mechanical advantage or just one with a smoother profile. That's going to improve your terminal performance. You can set your error up for higher FOC, and you can do that without changing the weight of the error. You can leave the weight the same, just change the weight distribution. That's going to improve your terminal performance. You could choose to use a single bevel broadhead rather than a double. There's no downside to using a single bevel broadhead whatsoever. There are a whole lot of upside advantages. That's going to improve the terminal performance. Now, let's talk for just a minute about broadhead sharpness and its importance. This is what's called the clotting cascade and sometimes known as the hemorrhaging cascade. And it's the physiologic process the body uses to seal off a bleeding blood vessel. And when you cut a blood vessel, you damage some of the cells that line the inner wall of the blood vessel. Every one of those cells on the inner wall of the blood vessel that is damaged releases prothrombin. The prothrombin uh, is a protein that will convert into the enzyme thrombin when it reacts with the blood plasma. Now the, the thrombin is going to act as a catalyst to get uh, fibrinogen to convert into fibrin. And the fibrin is going to attach to little rough ends of tissue at the cut blood vessel. The important thing to realize is that we can greatly influence this by the type of edge bevel you have on your broadhead. If you use the thinnest, smoothest, sharpest edge you can possibly get, when you cut that vessel, you're damaging fewer of the cells lining the blood vessel. That means there's going to be a whole lot less prothrombin released. At the other end of the cascade, that means less fibrin is produced. And that thinnest, smoothest, sharpest edge is also going to leave fewer tags of tissue where it cut the vessel. So now you have fewer tissue tags for the reduced amount of fibrin to attach to. And what you get is a severed blood vessel that's going to bleed more freely for a longer period of time. And that's exactly what you're trying to do. Do we have a thing in here? Nope.